Hey friends, my name's Mike, and today I wanna to show you how to export WAV files in Pro Tools, or how to make stems. Typically, the term stems refers to groups of tracks, like a drum subgroup, or all of the pads, as opposed to each individual track, but it's still pretty common to say stems when talking about exporting WAV files. First, let's get organized. Make a new folder for the song with the title, a tag for stems, the BPM, and the sample rate that you're working with. If you're not sure the sample rate information, you can click up here in the menu for setup, scroll down to session, and the sample and bit depth will be right here at the top. There are two types of stems that I like to export, one with all of my existing processing and one completely dry. You can put all of these waves into different folders for wet or dry, and I like to call them processed or unprocessed. I'll also make a folder for MIDI tracks because we're gonna export those individually too. As we go through exporting, I'll make subfolders for the different instruments like drums, bass, keys, guitars, vocals, and so on. But the different folders we're gonna need will become obvious as we get into exporting, so I'll wait to make those until we get there. So I have a pretty big session here with a lot of different tracks, and I'm not gonna show you how to do stems for the entire session because that'll just take all day. Instead, I'm gonna walk you through how I would make stems for these drum tracks because from there, it's just repeating the process throughout the rest of the song. So exporting the dry wave files is pretty simple. Now, what we wanna do is consolidate this. First, let's look at this kick drum track. There's a couple of different cuts on this track and if I was to export these individually, they would all line up back at zero for whoever is importing them. And it wouldn't line up with the rest of the drums or the rest of the song. So what we're gonna do is select everything on this track. I like to go to the end here, I'll click, Hold Shift, hit Enter, which makes a selection all the way back to zero, and then I'll click Option Shift 3, which will consolidate this into one long track. And now when whoever takes this and flies it into their session and lines it up at zero, the whole track is in order and it lines up the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna undo that and we'll make this edit for all of the drums. To do that, I'm gonna click at the end, drag to the beginning and slide down, scrolling a bit until I cover all of my drum tracks. And now I know that they're all selected from the end of the track all the way to zero. So all of these tracks will line up in the same way when somebody imports them into their session. Again, we'll hit Option Shift 3 and that will consolidate all of these drums into one long track individually for each drum. I'm just going to resize these to mini so I can see all of my drums in one, and I'm going to make a selection a little bit wider than the last track and bring it up. Now that all of my drums are selected, I want to export these dry wave files. So what I could do here is come down to the bottom right corner and expand the clip list. And now this is going to show us all of the clips in our session. And if we scroll, we'll see that the ones that are highlighted as I go by are the ones that I have highlighted in my session. So those are the drums that we just consolidated. There's a lot of tracks going on here and we can see there goes the hi-hats and the kick drum and we should have, let's see, the overheads, reverse cymbal track, the room track. So all of the drums I have selected here are selected in this clip list. I can go up to the top right corner, click this drop down arrow and find export clips as files. Now I have the keyboard shortcut memorized and I recommend you do too, which is shift command K. So I'm gonna close this list back up and with the selected, I'll hit command shift K and this brings up our export selected dialog box. I know that my session is 24 bit, 44.1, so I'm gonna click this and select 44.1. Leave them as waves, format interleaved, which just means that stereo tracks will remain as stereo tracks and it won't split them into a mono left and right. I'm gonna change the destination directory to the folders that we just made. So I'll click choose, I'll go to my desktop, stems for this song. These are unprocessed because we haven't committed any of the processing on these tracks. We're just exporting the raw files that we consolidated. So I'll open the unprocessed folder down here. I'll click make new folder for drums, click create, open, and export. You'll see it's processing the audio, and now if we check that folder on our computer in the unprocessed folder, we've got one for drums, and here's all our drums. So that's how you would export dry stems with none of the processing on your track. So to make the stems of the individual tracks, including the processing we have on it, we're gonna wanna select all of these drums. I'm gonna select the kick drum, which is the top one, hold shift, and go down to the reverse cymbal track, which is the last one. I'll click on that, and then we're gonna right click and scroll down to commit. And this will commit the processing as well as the automation and panning on the track. So we'll click commit and we have this dialog box. We have a couple check boxes here. Consolidate clips. In this case, not important because we've already consolidated the clips, but if you hadn't, you could use this option here. Render automation. This gives you the option to render the volume and panning automation into the track, which I like to do because if we're committing our processing, the volume automation is oftentimes part of the sound. We could be creating some kind of an effect, but that might be a case by case basis. So you have that option here. Then you have the option to copy the sends or the group assignments to the new tracks that it's going to make when it commits the processing. Doesn't really matter much for making 
interesting stems because send and group assignments are really dealing with internal routing and how we handle groups within Pro Tools, and we'll be exporting these tracks anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Then you have the option of what to do with the source tracks. You could hide and make them inactive, which is a good option. You could make them all inactive, leaving them visible in the session, or you could delete them, which is not the one I would recommend, or you could do nothing. And that's the one that I'm going to go with now. Offline just means that it's gonna render offline in faster than real time. If you don't check this box, you'll have to wait for the length of your song as it processes in real time. So we're gonna use offline because it's a real time saver. We'll click okay and we'll get this rendering dialog, which will take a minute. Okay, so it's made a bunch of new tracks for us and there's some interesting things to talk about here. So I wanna show you some of the routing I had on the original tracks so we can talk about what to do with them when we're making stems. So I'm gonna scroll up to the original drums here and I'm actually gonna flip over now to the mix window and we'll scroll over to our drums I like to use auxiliary tracks and routing folders to organize a big session. And if you don't know what these tracks are, I actually have another video which covers all the different track types within Pro Tools in detail. So in this case, I could collapse all the drums and hide them all if it wasn't using them. In this case, you'll see I have a kick drum track which goes to a drums pre-bus, and the input of that drums pre-bus is this routing folder. So I consider this a pre-drum mixing bus before my main output, and that's where the name comes from. I have a couple of snare drum tracks, and these are just some different trigger samples that I was using. This one I didn't end up using at all, so you can see the faders just turn all the way down. But these two I'm using, and they're going to a snare bus, which is the snare auxiliary track. And there's actually nothing going on here on this track. So exporting these stems individually is just fine, but the stem that was made from the snares group is going to be a combination of these two tracks. Now, if I was to give these stems to someone who was going to mix this, it might be a little confusing as to why there's three snare tracks. There's this one here, there's this other sample, and this track is both of those combined. Not really necessary since he already has these two. So what I would do then is just find the stem for the snares group and rename the snares track right here on the clip snares underscore GRP for group and click OK. Then I would just include in the email that any track that has the label group is an auxiliary track where I'd been summing and I wasn't doing any processing on the track itself. But if we look at the overheads, I have a left and a right and a group for both. And on the group, we've brought the fader down by 12 decibels and I've done some EQing. So if we flip over to the edit window and we look at the stems here, we can even see pretty visibly, let me make these a little bit bigger, that we've got the overhead left, overhead right, and the group of those two tracks. Now, because this track was rendered with the fader down 12 decibels, we can even see here that the waveforms don't come up nearly as high because they're 12 decibels lower. And on this track, the EQ that we applied over here was committed to the track, which is gonna make them sound different than the individual overhead files exported on their own. So what I do here is the same thing I mentioned before. I would rename this track and I would give this some kind of indicator that this track has processing done to it. So I'll double click and I'll call these overheads underscore group pros. And now I can include in the email to the client that any track that has underscore group pros was processed and that sound is going to be different than the individual tracks. At that point, it becomes up to whoever's receiving the stems to pick which version they want to use in their project. And so I find that by labeling this clearly gives them some flexibility. We've also sent them versions of all of these tracks completely dry. So if they wanted to do their own mix, they have that option as well. So I would just go through here and continue doing that. I had a spelling error here. This is the track for Tom's underscore group. There wasn't any processing going on that track, so we're gonna leave that as is. Snares have their group tag, tambourine and shaker. We'll call this tambo shaker underscore group, and let's double check if we had any processing on that track. We did not. It was just reduced by two dBs, and there we go. Now we would do the same thing we did earlier. We would select all of these tracks, and again, we could expand our clips list, go to the top here and export clips as files, or if you're getting used to the keyboard shortcuts like I recommend you do, we could just use Command Shift K, which brings up our dialog box. We're gonna go back up to the song folder because these are the process tracks. And we'll make a new folder here for drums, click Create, and open it. It remembered all of our settings from last time, so this is all accurate, and we'll hit Export. Okay, so opening up the song folder, we have a folder for unprocessed drums, and everything's in there. And we have a folder for processed drums, and everything's in there, including our group tracks and our group tracks with processing. Now let's look at how to export MIDI tracks. They're a little bit different than how we would export audio tracks, but it starts the same. We have a bunch of different clips across a track. We have all these individual clips, and we need them to be one. So I'm gonna go ahead to the end of this clip here, select all the way to the beginning, and I'll make the selection across all four of these MIDI tracks. I'll hit Option Shift 3 to consolidate them, and now if I select all of these and open up the clips list, you'll see that in this drop-down menu, there are no export options. 
They're all grayed out here, and that's because this is not the way that we would export MIDI. We can do this for audio, but not for MIDI files. So instead, we're gonna come over here to the track name. I'm gonna right click and select Export MIDI. Now we've got two options of MIDI file formats. One is multi-track and the other is single track, and they mean pretty much what they say. Single track means it's gonna take all of the MIDI tracks that you have selected and export them into a single track. I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna click OK, and we'll navigate to the MIDI folder for this song. I'll call it Santa Ana MIDI Single, and I'll click Save. Now if I import this MIDI file back into Pro Tools, what it's done is it's taken all of these tracks and summed them down to one. And we can see that the leads here for this bass track are going on up here, and the kick drum from this drum track that's following along, four on the floor, is also going on down here. So it summed all of these tracks into a single track. So let's delete that for now. Again, selecting all of these tracks, let's go over to the drum track, we'll right click, hit export, and instead we'll choose multi-track. I'll click OK and I'll rename this Santa Ana MIDI Multi. We'll hit save, and if we import that back into Pro Tools, we can see that it imports each track individually and it names them for us with a couple extra tags that Pro Tools included. But for the most part, these are all named correctly and each MIDI track is split out the way that someone could import into their project, assign the sounds, and take it from there. So that gives them the files to create their own sounds, but what it doesn't do is give them any of the sounds that you've created. So to do that, we'll follow the same steps we would if we were exporting processed audio stems. We're gonna select all four of these MIDI tracks and we'll right click and hit Commit. And this will render all of the processing on these tracks, including the virtual instruments, which is basically how the sounds are being generated. We'll leave this as is, click OK and let it render. And now we have audio files, which we know how to export. We can select them, click Command Shift K, and we'll export these the same way we would for processed audio tracks. So I'll go to choose my destination folder, I'll back up into the process folder, and I'll call these virtual instruments. And we'll click Export, and there we go. So we've covered how to consolidate and export WAV files dry without any processing. We've covered how to export stems that are processed the way you have them in your session, how to add tags to your tracks so that whoever is receiving these stems can differentiate between groups that are processed, not processed, or the individual tracks. We covered how to export MIDI files and how to commit those sounds to export as audio files as well. I hope you found this helpful, and if so, please subscribe to the channel for more music production and music business tips and tricks, and I'll see you in the next video.